gratitude goals, how to set revenue goals without fear of failure. Here is my complete guide to setting gratitude goals, otherwise known as revenue goals for your business. I share my revenue allocation model and help you decide your goal. Today we're going to focus on what you want to get out of your business. In other words, let's focus on how much money you want to receive. I've already given you an overview of the 3G goals that all business owners need to set, which are gratitude goals, giving goals and growing goals. Today we are going in depth into gratitude goals. There are a lot of misconceptions and mistakes that people are making when it comes to setting revenue goals. We are going to clear all that up and dig deep so you set exactly the right revenue goals for you at this stage of your life and your business. There are two aspects to setting gratitude goals which are our own salary and the revenue that the business makes. Today we are only going to focus on setting a revenue goal for your business. In my book Stamp Goals I go in depth into how to decide how much to pay yourself from your business revenue using my 40% allocation model. Are you ready for more money in your business life? It all starts here. I would just like to know what you're currently struggling with when it comes to goal setting for your business. Have you ever been confused about how much to set as a goal for the revenue in your business? Have you ever been impulsive with your business money and wished you had a better system for allocating the revenue? Have you ever avoided goal setting because you were so scared of not hitting your goals? Have you ever set a massive revenue goal and not known if it is something that you are in alignment with? So let me know what you've struggled with by leaving a comment on my blog, on my YouTube channel or send me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. I always love to hear from you and I would love to know if you are enjoying my podcast. Today you will figure out how much money to set as a gratitude goal for your business. You will give your money a purpose with my Grow 6 business rule. You will discover how to set revenue goals without fear of failure and you will understand how to set goals that you are in complete alignment with. My name is Kath Kyle and I am the author of Stamp Goals book and I am so happy that you're here. I help content creators and change makers manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy. I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset and I'm going to help you overcome all of your issues with goal setting today. But just before I do, I just wanted to let you know how excited I am that my new book Stamp Goals has now been released and it is ready to purchase. This book is a total game changer for your business and it will help you set goals that are right for you and help you actually achieve them through practical and energetic principles. So head on over to Amazon and search for Stamp Goals book and grab your copy before I raise the prices which I will be doing consistently. Now let's move on to setting gratitude goals for your business. This is a little bit more complicated than just setting goals for your own salary. Whatever revenue you receive in your business, you have to make sure you can afford to pay all of your expenses. One of your expenses is paying your own personal salary and any associated expenses that go along with that. You will also need to set some money aside for tax on any profits that you've made. Any questions around tax should be given to your accountant as the answer will be different for everyone. It is often not even possible for your accountant to know how much money you need to be setting aside for tax on a monthly basis, but you can have a rough guess. It might be around 20 or 30% of your profit. I have personally always put away 30% of my profit for tax every month. What I would suggest you do is put your tax money away in a separate account so you never have to worry about finding the money for your tax bill. 
you really don't want the worry of how you are going to pay your tax bill to get in the way of you thinking positively about achieving your goals. Would I be right in thinking that not only would you like to bring in more money to your business, but maybe you'd like to keep a bit more of it as a buffer? So let's also focus on a particular amount of profit that you'd like to make in your business. If you have an online business, the profit can usually be quite high, often between 50 to 70%. So depending on the type of business that you have, go ahead and set your expected profit margin for your business now. If you are new to business, this will have to be a very rough guess. So for example, if you want to pay your own salary at say $2,000 a month, you might have an extra $500 of associated expenses that your business has to pay legally that are associated with your salary. If you have an online business, you might also have expenses of say $2,500 a month, which might include paying one assistant and lots of online tools and an accountant. So if we add this all together, that comes to $5,000 of expenses per month. Now just say that your business generates $10,000 a month. You take your expenses away from your revenue and you are left with a healthy profit of $5,000, which is a 50% profit margin. That sounds pretty good, but we forgot something. Tax. A lot of people forget tax as you often don't have to pay it for quite a while after starting a business. Say for example, your business is being taxed at a rate of 20%, which means you have to put away $1,000 of your profit into a tax account. This money is not yours, so I personally never recommend that people spend their tax money in the hope that they will make it back later. Spending your tax money in advance will cause you a massive amount of stress, so it's just not worth it. So now you're left with a profit of $4,000 from $10,000 in revenue. And it sounds like a big drop, but this is still a very healthy profit margin. You can use some of the $4,000 towards anything you like. You can withdraw even more money out of the business for your own personal wealth. And you can choose to invest some of the money back into your business and save some of it. Bear in mind that if you choose to invest some of your profit back into your business the following month, your expenses the following month will be higher and your profit will be lower. So now you've got a rough idea of the kind of amount of money your business needs to generate in revenue to be able to pay your salary and other expenses. This also helps you to see that when people boast about their business revenue, a lot of people assume that they get to personally spend all that money and it's just not true. Your business needs to generate a lot more revenue than you think to be able to afford to provide you with a generous salary. Another thing worth mentioning is that your costs might not rise at the same rate as your revenue. A lot of the costs of running a business are fixed. As your business grows, your team will grow larger, but you won't need as big of a team as you might think to support a lot more extra revenue. Another thing that six or seven figure business owners find is that when they reach a certain level of growth, to grow even further, they need to be investing a lot of money into paid advertising, and this can reduce the profit margin but it means that they can scale to a much higher level, much faster than they would, than would be possible than just from organic growth. If you could aim to keep your profit margin between 40 to 70%, that would be a very stable business model. Some types of businesses such as retail probably wouldn't be able to operate with such a high profit margin. What level of profit sounds good to you and what is doable with your own business model? Now let's set some gratitude goals for your business. What I'd like you to do is set your 10 year goals first and work your way backward. This focuses the mind on big thinking. So here is an example of all of the gratitude goals for all of the different time periods that you could set. 
10 years. If you wanted to generate revenue of $5 million a year, that would be $420,000 per month. In five years, if you wanted to be running a million dollar business, you would have to be pulling in $85,000 a month. If, and I've just rounded these numbers up or down just so they're nice round numbers. If in three years you wanted a business that pulled in $240,000 a year, you would have to be making $20,000 a month. If in the next one year you wanted a six-figure business and you wanted to be pulling in $120,000 a year, you'd have to be making $10,000 a month. If in the next three months you want to be making $1,000, just set that for the next three months and look at the next month. What do you want to earn in the next month? Say, for example, $300. With this example, we'd be running a multi-million dollar business within 10 years, a seven-figure business within five years, and a six-figure business within one year. When you are setting your business goals, ask yourself what revenue goal would change everything in your business. Again, notice how even reading this example makes you feel about setting your own goal. If you feel like this would be way too much for your business, ask yourself why. What story are you telling yourself? Are you just not the kind of person who achieves goals like this? Why not imagine just for a second that you are that kind of person? Can you start to dream a bit bigger? It's no problem if you can't right now, but later on in my Stamp Goals book, we can address these limitations in your belief system and at that stage, you might want to come back and increase your gratitude goals. I encourage you to revisit and change your long-term goals on a yearly basis at the very least. This gives you enough time to see how things are progressing and decide if you want to follow the same path for the future. At the same time as you set your three month goal, you should also set your one month goal and revisit those on a monthly basis. You can change your goals if they no longer feel right to you, but don't let fear be the reason you never change any of your goals. Something that's very important to do when you are setting goals for revenue is to give the money a purpose. Why do you want to earn this much money in your business? Have you ever given it much thought? Money is just energy and it's not actually worth anything unless you give it a purpose and a use for some reason. It needs to feel useful and used for a purpose. And when you attach a purpose to your money and decide how it is going to be used, it is much more likely that you will receive that money. Even if you save your money, that is still putting your money to good use. When you save your money, what you're actually doing is giving it to someone else and they put your money into use. So for example, when you put your money into your bank account, what you're actually doing is loaning your money to the bank and allowing them to spend it. Your bank spends the money by giving people loans so they can buy their dream house or they, the bank gives it to businesses so they can open up a local organic cafe round the corner from your house, for example. There is always a good use for the money that is invested. In return, your bank gives you interest to say thank you for the loan so your money makes money. You make a small amount of money back in interest as the bank's finances are very safe and you are guaranteed to get your money back most of the time. When you invest your money in slightly more risky ways, such as the stock market, again, you are investing in businesses, so that helps to improve the whole economy. These businesses provide people with jobs that give them the income to spend more money on other businesses, such as yours, which benefits everyone. Because investing directly in other businesses is riskier, you receive more money back in dividends and if those businesses do well, the value of your stocks increases which brings you more wealth in the future. You could also choose to give some of your money to charity and although you won't get any money back directly back from doing that, you know that the money is put to good use to help people who are not able to raise the money they need from any other method. 
and you increase the wealth of other people and they spend more of their money which boosts the economy and that's good for everyone and of course it makes you feel really good to help people in this way and you can of course choose to spend your money on buying products and services directly from businesses this is also fabulous for the economy and helps to keep people in jobs. So no matter what you do with your money, it always benefits other people. So the more money you make, the more good you can do in the world. The worst thing you could do with your money is store it under a mattress. It is doing no good in the world and it is likely to be destroyed or stolen, which directly proves that money is worthless unless you use it. Now, maybe you can see that for the good of society, it is more beneficial for you to make more money. The more money you make, the more money other people receive and the circle of wealth continues back to you again. So if you are the type of person to say that you don't care about making more money, I hope this has changed your mind. For your gratitude goal, you need to decide what you are going to do with your revenue. So what you need to do is make a list of everything that you will spend your business revenue on. So are you still following all of this? So to help you streamline this process even further, I have developed two rules. One is called the 40% income rule, which is a method of allocating money to particular purposes in your personal life. And the other rule is called the grow six business rule. This is a method of allocating excess money in your business. And you can read more about the 40% income rule in my stamp goals book. And I will walk you through the grow six business rule right now. But this is also an excerpt from my book. So if you want to see this, you can go and read this in my book if you want a refresher. So how to allocate money with the grow six business rule. Allocating money within a business can be a lot more complicated than deciding how to allocate your personal income. All businesses are set up in different ways. So I can give you advice on your own company structure and business model. So I suggest you speak to an accountant about that. How I suggest you allocate money within a business is as follows. Make a list of the regular payment you made last month in your business. Now make a list of all of the money you received into your business bank account last month. From whatever is left, put away a tax estimate into a tax bank account so you don't have to worry about paying your tax bill. Putting tax away at this stage of the process will mean that you actually save more tax than you need. But it's better to save too much towards tax and be left with a nice bonus rather than being stuck with a massive tax bill that you can't afford. Putting away more tax than you need also helps you build up a nice emergency fund for your business. The money that's left over after you've put the tax money away can be allocated using the Grow 6 business rule. Now you're going to allocate money to the six different purposes with percentages that you will choose yourself. But I will tell you the percentages that I've chosen for myself below to give you an idea of how I do it. The Grow Six Business Rule helps you to grow your own personal wealth, your team, your brand, your working environment, yourself, and your cash. With the Grow Six Business Rule, you allocate the following percentages to these different areas, and I will explain what the areas are in a minute. You will allocate 50% of your profit to wealth. You'll allocate 10% of your profit to team. You'll allocate 10% of your profit to your brand. You'll allocate 10% of your profit to your environment. You'll allocate 10% of your profit to you and you'll allocate 10% of your profit to cash. So let's break these down. So number one, 50% of your profit goes to wealth. So pay yourself an extra 50% to grow your own personal wealth. So this is money that you pay yourself. And this is on top of any salary that you've already paid yourself as a regular minimum income. So think of this money as a bonus for bringing more revenue and profit into your business. 
and your accountant will be able to help you decide which is the most tax efficient method of taking money out of your business. Number two, allocate 10% of your profit to your team. So this is for growing your team. You might be able to increase your team members hours or hire additional staff to support your business growth. Number three, invest 10% of your money into growing your business brand. Things that grow your brand are paid advertising, sponsorships, or paid opportunities to get the word out there about your business. The more money you bring into your business, the more money you'll end up investing in growing your brand. Number four, invest 10% of your money into growing your environment. This includes things like computers, tech, cameras, office equipment, office spaces, and hiring function rooms and venues. Number five, invest 10% of your money into your own personal growth. Personal development is one of my very favorite areas to invest my money in, as I know my growth is often the biggest factor in increasing my business success. And number six is investing 10% into growing your cash reserves. In other words, save 10% of your excess money each month as that's the sensible thing to do to keep your business afloat and stop you stressing about money. And I have got a image of a diagram of all of the six areas of allocation in my book. I also just want to mention that don't feel like you have to spend all of the money each month. It's a sensible idea to invest most of the money into your business bank account so you can make bigger, more informed purchases as and when you need them. So how can we make sure that we always have spare money in our business? Another name for this spare money is profit. However, that's not strictly true because some of these items are business expenses and you usually spend money on expenses before you decide on your profit. But spending the money before you knew how much money you had made in profit is not sensible because most people would spend more money than they had and they wouldn't allocate it properly. To be able to follow this allocation model, you have to have spare money left at the end of the month after your expenses have been paid. So it is a sensible idea to try and get your expenses as low as you possibly can so you actually have money left over to allocate to growth. It would be great if the expenses in your business, including your own salary, are not more than 60% of your revenue. This makes your business much more stable and gives you a larger chunk of money to allocate at the end of the month. Having income rules takes the decision-making process out of the equation. If you always know exactly where your income is going every month, it helps you avoid making impulsive decisions like blowing the whole lot on one very expensive coaching package that you can't afford. Equally, it helps you spend money when you can afford to spend it. When you do have the funds, you absolutely should invest in the growth of your business. So is this all getting you thinking? Having income rules, my own personal life and my business is one of the best things I ever did for my finances because there's no worry, there's no guilt and no arguments about where the money is going. So here is an example of allocating a purpose to business revenue. So here is how you would allocate $1,000 in spare money after you've already taken the tax off and saved it. So you've got $1,000 left. So what you would do if you were following this method is you would allocate $500 towards a personal bonus, which is called dividends. You would allocate $100 towards increasing your assistance hours. You would allocate $100 towards boosting Facebook posts to advertise your product. You would allocate $100 to saving up for a new computer. And you would allocate, say, $50 towards saving up for a new training course and $50 in books and audiobooks for the month. And finally, $100 towards savings in the business bank account to build up a buffer. So how much revenue should you set as a goal for your business? People often get very confused as to what they should set as a revenue goal for their business. 
should you play it safe and set your goal slightly more than you've already achieved or should you think big and reach for the stars with a crazy goal that you really don't think could ever be possible for you many experts suggest that you only set realistic goals and you only aim for slightly more than you achieved last time and other experts will say always reach for the stars because what's the point in setting a goal if you don't aim to make big changes and here's the risk with both types of goals the risk with a small goal is that you easily achieve it and you could have achieved a lot more and you might be holding yourself back the risk with a big goal is that it really stretches you and you feel so overwhelmed by it that you can't get behind it and if you don't achieve it it will lead to such a great level of disappointment that anything you did achieve will pale in comparison and you won't celebrate any progress you did make towards your goal so what's the solution i have two methods of tackling this setting manageable and mammoth goals at the same time so first of all i suggest that you get more comfortable with your short-term goals and really stretch yourself with your long-term goals for example if you're new to business it might take you at least a year to really find your feet in the world of business and by that stage you might be at a level playing field with someone who has been in business for much longer so i suggest that you set easy goals what i refer to as manageable goals that you feel are manageable for your one month three month and one year goals and after three months of achieving all of your manageable goals you'll be so confident that you are able to achieve the goals that you are setting for yourself for your three five and ten year goals i suggest that you really stretch yourself reach for the stars and set a wild crazy goal that you don't ever believe that you could achieve at that stage and i call these mammoth goals these goals might make you feel a little bit sick and you might feel like you need a miracle to achieve these goals and that is completely normal so setting manageable and mammoth goals has two benefits you are only currently working towards a manageable goal that you think you can easily achieve in the short term this boosts your confidence and makes it much more likely that you will continue to work towards your short-term goal without giving up however you will also be reading your long-term mammoth goals regularly and within about a month you'll be feeling so confident at your consistency of working towards your short-term manageable goals you'll have so much repetition of your goals in your mind that you'll really start to believe that your long-term mammoth goals are also possible say for example you set a manageable goal to just make 100 dollars in a brand new business in the next three months just making one sale in your business will convince you that people want to buy what you have to offer if you can figure out how to scale your offer to a lot more people you can start to believe that earning a certain amount of revenue is simply just a maths equation you can reach a certain number of people with an attractive offer and a certain percentage of people are guaranteed to buy once you are selling something that people want your only job is to figure out how to reach as many of them as you possibly can then achieving your mammoth goal is simply a numbers game your subconscious mind will really start to believe that you are a six or a seven figure business owner as you've repeated the statement so many times it will become inevitable that you will achieve your manageable and your mammoth goals when you start to gain more confidence with your manageable goals you can increase these every three months to set new higher goals for yourself in the short term you might even achieve your one year goal early and in that case you should set a new higher one year goal for yourself i really believe that because i set a crazy long-term mammoth goal for my very first business before i earned a single penny it convinced my brain that my business was going to be big and help millions of people which it certainly did the number of page views my first business has achieved since it started has been over 
30 million. So it absolutely worked for my thinking, which at the start, I don't think I ever thought it would be possible to reach that many people because I'd never done it before. Whatever you set as your gratitude goal, the most important thing you can do is decide that you are going to make that amount and never lose faith that the money is on its way to you. And here is another idea worth pondering about mammoth goals. When you learn to follow your intuition and trust God, you will start to find that God places mammoth goals on your heart more and more often. If you feel like you have a desire to achieve a particular goal, you don't know how, but you feel like you could manage it and you feel a bit scared and a bit nervous about it because it's such a big step for you. God has given you a burning desire to achieve a mammoth goal. And if you think about it, having a desire to achieve a mammoth goal totally makes sense. If we find all of our goals too easy to achieve, why do we need to trust God or the universe at all? You might be tempted to go small because you are scared, but if you have any desire at all to set a goal that feels like a massive step up for you, I encourage you to follow your heart. Lean on God to achieve your goal and keep it in mind that it is normal to feel fear and doubt when it comes to achieving big goals. In our own strength, these goals would be impossible. If you know that you could never work enough hours to reach your goal by trading your time for money, it is time to start thinking bigger. If you have a desire to achieve a mammoth goal but feels like it's impossible, it's time to step up. With God's help, we can experience miracles. A question that a lot of people ask is, isn't it limiting myself if I don't set a goal to make six or seven figures this year? A lot of business experts will encourage entrepreneurs to set really big goals for their first year of business and say things like, go big or go home. While I love to set big goals for myself, I also feel that they should be manageable too. Goals need to feel right to you. You have to really believe that they are going to happen, at least in the short term. Do you really believe that you can make $1 million by the end of this year? Can you even imagine what that would look like in your business? Have you thought about how many products you would have to sell to make $1 million? What price are your products? Say for example, you are selling a course priced at $97, say like $100. That would mean that you would have to sell your course to over 10,000 people. Are you also offering a members group within that course? That would mean that you'd have 10,000 customers to support inside that members group. How many customer services inquiries would you have to receive to accept that many people into your course? How many of those customers would lose their login information and be asking customer support about that? Do you have the infrastructure to cope with that kind of business? And you don't have to let the thought of something like this feel daunting to you because it's easy to hire people to support you in business. You would have to have the money to do that, but you do have to mentally be ready to manage this kind of process within your business. You have to be mentally ready to hire people and to manage them and support them. It's not the physical aspect of managing a million dollars that is daunting for most people. It's the mental ability to be able to manage the money that is what most people are not ready for. Of course, you could instead go down the route of offering high ticket priced offerings like high value coaching programs. That would mean that you wouldn't have to manage thousands of customers within your business. And to sell high ticket programs, you have to manage the feelings in your mind of being worthy of charging very high prices to a small number of people. If you can manage that and believe that what you have to offer is worth a very high price, then this could be a great option for you. If you can honestly picture yourself making $1 million by the end of this year and you feel like you have the ability to manage the resources and the mindset to manage that within your business, then by all means, set that kind of goal for yourself. 
the most important thing about setting your gratitude goal is the belief that you are going to achieve your goal. If you can't believe it, it probably won't happen. Does that make sense? So now that you have learned how to set gratitude goals for your business, you might be wondering how you can set gratitude goals for your own personal income. And I walk you through this process and explain why it's essential to separate your business revenue and your own income from an energetic point of view in my Stamp Goals book. To get hold of my book, you can click the link around this content or you can, you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash stamp goals. And there you can read more about it, read about the fabulous bonuses that I'm giving to anyone who purchases my book and get a link to both the Kindle and the paperback books on Amazon. And now you've figured out how to write your own gratitude goals, you might be interested to hear my own goals journey and how I figured out how to achieve big goals by letting go. And that's what I'm going to be sharing next time. So make sure you subscribe to my podcast, Manifest Business Success, my YouTube channel, Kath Kyle, and follow me on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle so you don't miss that. And while you're waiting for your copy of Stamp Goals book to arrive, you can start taking practical action in your business today. Go and watch my free business goal setting workshop for fast results where I show you exactly how to set three essential goals that will get you results within one month. Boost your confidence, feel like a winner and attract more success to you by achieving your goals every time. And this free workshop and associated workbook is part of my book bonus bundle for stamp goals. And I'm only making this workshop and workbook free for a limited time. So go and grab that while it's still available. And you can get that by clicking the link around this content or going to kathkyle.com forward slash goals workshop. You are going to be so glad that you did. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.